Ang, Facebook had mm-hmm. me schedule a, an event. It had me schedule a live stream event. And now it asked me to add a whole new live streaming thing. So we're either going live three different times at all. And my money is on. Those it's at least once. Yeah. yeah. Well, God's uh, sake, Facebook. Oh, oh, hey, hey. Hey, it says we're live now. Oh, oh it does say we're live. Does. All right, I'm turning off my preview in the window, so I only have to look Mm -hmm. at Steve's beautiful face. That is a thing that they allow us to do here on Mutants and Masterminds Monday. Hello, everybody. You, uh, for our friends that are joining us, um, welcome to Mutants and Masterminds Monday. Today, we are, we're kind of doing it uh, old school style, uh, primarily because both Zoom and Facebook have decided to update all of their streaming stuff. And so we have 50 different thousand ways to stream, which is always fun. Um, I see AJ's in here. I see uh, Jonesy's here. We are doing a lot of uh, background kind of planning and thinking and, and exploring new ideas. And Crystal mentioned today, hey, why don't we talk about the possibility of new settings outside of you know the uh, uh, outside of the Earth Prime and that 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 was that was all Steve. Oh, that was Steve. I'm sorry, Steve. I'm stealing your good ideas and giving them away. I just really no worries. I'm used to it. <laughs> you do have really good ideas, and actually, so many good ideas that share the wealth. I mean, honestly. <laughs> I mean, that's fair. You make the rest of us feel bad being just brilliant and good looking. (laughs) Seriously. But yeah, well, and the both of you, Crystal, Steve, two of the most beautiful Monday people that I have had the joy of spending a Monday with, um, we're doing it. Um, Crystal, uh, Steve, let's talk a bit about what we hope to accomplish and what we want to, uh, to do by way of, you know, settings and mutants and masterminds. Okay, because for a second I thought you were like, what are we going to accomplish by having a Monday? I'm like, well, we'd really like to make it to Tuesday. <laughs> That's right true. at this point. Absolutely. Yeah. Go ahead. Um... <laughs> well, I mean, as far as settings go, um, as longtime fans of Mutants and Masterminds are aware, the, uh, no pun intended, prime setting of Mutants and Masterminds has been Earth Prime. Uh, which is the setting that incorporates Freedom City and later Emerald City um, when we expanded upon it and later the whole of the Atlas of Earth Prime uh, material that details even more about the whole world uh, of Earth in the setting. And um, for the longest time, uh, Earth Prime has been the Mutants and Mastermind setting, essentially. We've done a few other uh, small licensed books Um, and uh, we've done a few um, uh, other sort of one-shot explorations of other settings, um, but uh, there really hasn't been much in the way of a sustained other setting for Mutants and Masterminds. Um, And uh, one of the things that we're talking about uh, as we continue to do new Mutants and Masterminds products and we continue to expand the line and develop new things is you know, would a new setting serve the game and its fans well in a way? And if so, what would that new setting look like? Yeah, I mean, it's it's been something we think about a lot. I mean, in part because we did a big book describing all of Earth Prime, and then we did a second big book describing all of the universe of Earth Prime. Which doesn't leave a whole lot. Yeah, we kind of painted ourselves into a corner there. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Yeah, we put the caveat on there, you know, outside of Earth Prime. Yeah. What can we do? Um, What do you, so (laughs) you imagine uh, the the act of creating for our many, many fans. Um, Are there aspects that that you feel like might be missing that are, you know, sort of other, um, you know, other primely, other earthly? Uh, I mean, I do kind of feel like our world is missing speciation uh, because because it started as Freedom City. If mm-hmm. Freedom City just combined every superhero trope into one setting, because I mean, at the time, Steve, you had no idea this would still be running twenty years later, right? <laughs> uh, so. Freedom City includes like all your magic heroes and villains, all your tech heroes and villains, all your mutants and your cosmic and 
uh, dark and gritty vigilantes and all of that just in one like 10 square mile block of coastline. <laughs> so uh, one of the things I think it misses is that it doesn't get to drill down really heavily on any one comic trope. It, it kind right. of has to serve too many masters. Right, uh, right. Yeah. We've got a couple things from the chat that I want to dive into. Um, mm. First of all, um, uh, Jay Gray has to wash his dog. And so no! he, he oh, no. gives the Link Wizard for us. He, Who will Link things? I don't right? even know what to do now. I mean, how do you do that when you've got a, you know, a Link Wizard and I'll, I'll wash your today. dog, Jay. You're more yeah. important to the stream than I am. We're going to go wash your dog, Jay. Get the <laughs> one ready. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, best of luck, Jay, on that endeavor. I, I hope it's a tiny dog. <laughs> and, uh, so uh, Raina says hello. Uh, AJ as well. We're, uh, I'm not saying an update on my live counter. Not that it matters, but I know that there are more than two of you because I can see you talking. Uh, Raina says, uh, first, mm -hmm. AJ says, these adventures was fantastic. Um, Raina says, I love the cosmic book. Would love to see that expanded upon. And then um, asks, uh, what are the keys to making a setting distinct? Those kinds of things. And then BT Sketch Buccino, uh, owner of mm -hmm. my favorite name on this earth, is um, uh, a Paragon's uh, third edition could be fun. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, you do touch on the, the one other Mutants and Masterminds setting we... No, Good I guess on. they're... There was also Nocturnals in first edition. That's true. I mean, there's Nocturnals and Wild Cards, which was also yeah. licensed. And DC uh, Adventures, which right. is another licensed setting, but again, not one we created. Right, indeed. Right. Um, yeah, yeah I mean, and Paragons but... touches upon, you know, a setting that has some differences mm -hmm. in that, you know, Paragons was focused on a more, you know, sort of uh, what if, you know, people with superpowers existed in a more real world type setting rather than a strictly one that was based on sort of the tropes of the comic books mm -hmm. uh, as far as it goes. And that's certainly one option in terms of another setting that brings something else uh, that, that Earth Prime doesn't do. What is yeah. metaphor? Oh, metaphor was the original Mutants and Mastermind setting way back mm -hmm. in first edition uh, when uh, all the original art and some of the like world building was contracted to a another game development company called Super Unicorn that included mm -hmm. uh, people like uh, Paizo publisher Eric Mona and Wolverine artist Ramon Perez. Wow. Yeah, that's great. So that uh, that uh, deep cut coming from BT's <laughs> Um that's good stuff. Yeah, uh, we love this setting. We just don't have the rights to it, unfortunately. Right. Apologies, Raina. I, I kind of blew through um, all of these questions, just kind of dumped them all. And I think we might have skipped wow. over the idea of like, <laughs> what, um, uh, what are the keys to making uh, a setting distinct? Like how, what are, are there some special tricks of the trade or you just, you just think differently? Just use different art. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> a lot of it is coming up with a common mood or theme that recurs mm -hmm. across the setting even though different things might change uh i i mean i can't speak too much to third edition m m because a lot of that setting material was built before i came on but when i was helping develop pathfinder and the world of galarian uh like the big recurring theme we tried to put in every new area is something is screwed up in the last hundred years like there's mm -hmm. been a radical shift in living memory and how are people adapting to that hmm. relatable <laughs> uh, you know i'm looking at this uh, matthew tyler says will we see a 3e update for the 2e worlds of freedom and freedom's most wanted supplements uh, i don't think we're really looking at that right now i mean a hmm. lot of the characters from Freedom's Most Wanted appeared in Rogue's Gallery or Threat Report or Freedom mm -hmm. City Third Edition. I mean, that's yep. where Conquer Worm ended up. That's where. Uh, Did you say Hunger Worm? No, Conquer Worm. worm. <laughs> I gotcha. The idea of Hunger Worm. Yes, I'm Hunger like... Worm. And uh, Gowana. Mm -hmm. Oh, gosh. I mean, yeah, sadly, not every one of those. Yeah, there were a lot of fun characters in that book. Yep. Yeah, and a bunch of, of Worlds of Freedom stuff is also in Cosmic Handbook mm -hmm. uh, as well. Yeah. 
that's where the uh, Freedom League 2525 ended up. And yeah, and uh, and then um, Time Travelers Codex as well. As yeah, uh, some Freedom City Beyond ended up in Freedom City, where we started laying mm -hmm. the foundation for all the changes that we saw in that book. Yeah. I'm looking at the Cosmic Handbook, which um, uh, thank you, Jonesy, for dropping in and, and playing sort of uh, our backup link wizard. Um, you are a, a friend and a uh, and a great linker. Um, I'm checking this out. So on the cover, uh, I'm not going to do, I suppose I could do a share screen math. Uh, there's a big giant floating mind. Is that the, um, you know, it's kind of everybody's out there in space. Is that the atomic overmind? That is the Cosmic Mind. Uh, the uh, Atomic Overmind is a publishing company. Oh, uh, and the Atomic Brain is a supervillain from Metaphor. Yep, and the Cosmic Mind is a villain from Freedom City, who is Correct. a disembodied brain with and psychic then, powers. And then we had there's legacy forums um, stuff as I'm kind of going through the data. That was was there something there that was sort of. I thought it was uh, Atomic Overmind or something was a, like a- uh, The forums were used to be referred to as the Atomic Think Tank. That's <laughs> what it is. Gotcha, gotcha. There's Way a big too many. Venn, right, big Venn diagram of, of atomics and brains that all overlap. Cosmic rays in general, plus thinky meets. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. And we, you know, that we, I think what the issue is, is we are so brilliant that we uh, <laughs> need to find different ways to express our thinking needs. And, uh, and this is how we do it. So here's some great comments. Let's see. Um, some gentleman, John Polajak, is that an, I don't know. I don't know. Mm. Polajak, Polajak, Polajak. Hey, oh, he mm -hmm. made those shirts. Oh, the polo. Yes. Mm. It's like a shirt slash jacket. The yes. I love. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, uh, John says I would suggest a book exploring several parallels <laughs> to Earth Prime, since GMs and players will eventually want to explore crossovers anyway. This would oh, yeah. be similar to GURPS Infinite Worlds books, <laughs> focusing on exploring three to four alternative. Oh wow, there's more. Hold on. Yeah. Oh good. Uh, there, yeah. there was the the Time Travelers Codex was originally supposed to be part of of a series of books exploring settings. So mm -hmm. the next one we were hoping to put together, but now with the schedule being so all over the place, who knows what's going to happen. Right. Uh, the next one was going to be exploring alternate Earths. So it was going to be the, like the Parallel Worlds Handbook or Codex or the Cross Worlds Codex. Or... Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Yeah. And so that's just a kind of a, an idea that sort of hovers in the, uh, the to-do list. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, yep. fantastic. Um, yep. Let's see, uh, a question um, Alan asks, and I'm just gonna say yes to this Alan and soon, I think is the answer, but will there be a physical print copy of the new Time Travelers? Or the new <laughs> it is. Yes, it is on a boat. It is on a boat, literally. As yeah. near yes. as we can tell, it might it might be in customs. I, I don't I don't have specific tracking information for it, but, but you know, there uh, is. Because we love yes. you all, what we uh, showed off a copy of that, uh, sort of a publisher's. Uh, oh, you have it up. There yes, you go. Yes, it is I printed. Do. It exists. It exists. So there you oh, go. Here we go. Here's a spread we haven't showed off before. Mm. So the answer is will there be a physical print? Yes. Mm -hmm. But I only have physical gets print. it. But only for, yeah, you know, I'm the only one who gets it. <laughs> yeah, there'll only be one. <laughs> you only do one, and it's just for Chris. Anyone Paul. who wants it will have to defeat me in ritual combat. Oh, da -da 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 -da. Alan says, um, isn't this magic stuff, uh, isn't that magic stuff in the supernatural book? Magic stuff? Magic stuff, yeah. Alan, um, uh, elaborate for me. Um, uh, let's see. Mm -hmm. the, uh, Josie says, would love to see a world uh, at the start of the new heroic age. Mm hmm Yep. That's a little of what we tried to do with um, Emerald City uh, to a degree, but it's still set in Earth Prime, so obviously there's still a whole history of superheroes as far as that goes. Yeah. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about like what goes through your mind when you do setting design? Well, I, I agree with you. I think that it's uh, a lot of, you know, thinking about what you want the setting to deliver as far as that goes, mm -hmm. uh, and had I had I known that Freedom City was going to be the seed of a, oh, kind of lost you there, Steve. 
spread things out uh, a little bit more ethically and uh, as far as what uh, showed up uh, in the in the setting. Um, because for a, a superhero game like Mutants and Masterminds, if you start out with the notion of I want a setting that includes everything from the comic books in one form or another, that's a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a lot to include, especially in just one city. <gasps> yeah. I think I think if we were starting over from scratch, we'd just like spread it out mm -hmm. and we'd have it all in the same world, but we'd have like, this is the city for magic stuff. And this is yeah. your city where there are tech heroes and villains and <clears throat> pardon me. Yeah. yeah, and we do, we sort of did a little of that in Atlas of Earth Prime um, in terms of yeah. setting up locations like Ferroburg uh, mm -hmm. and the like. But uh, again, it's, it's uh, I don't want to call it an afterthought, but a little, you know, sort of uh, but developed after the fact, as far as, you know, Earth Prime already having a very established uh, setting. Yeah, and I mean, you'll, you'll always need your New York City where everything merges mm -hmm. together. Right. So are there different definitions of what a setting could be? Um, so it's mm -hmm. a city a universe, a, you know, it's cartoon land where everything looks like a cartoon, you know, that kind of mm -hmm. thing. Um, are, are those different, you know, the kind of graduating settings or, um, and when you think about it, do you think of a, a whole, I mean, how do you piece well, those together? I mean, a setting carries, especially in a superhero, well, in a setting, any game really, a setting combines sort of what genre you're dealing with um, as well as sort of what are the actual sort of places and people and things that are going on in the story so far as that goes. Uh, so, uh, you know, a setting can be both uh, what kind of story is this? Is it a horror story? Is it a, you know, a dark vigilante story? Is it a cosmic, you know, story? Uh, um, you know, what, what are the stories that are suited to this setting? Um, and also what are the, the set pieces, the, the, the backgrounds, the characters, the locations that, that facilitate those stories. Got it, got it. So it could be, you know, so Jonesy says, um, you know, still can add those more thematic cities. We would love to buy them. Mm -hmm. We'd love to when you want to spend your money on our stuff. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's interesting. And how um, it, it, do you take extra caution when sort of introducing an entire new sort of reality um, that has implications looking into the future, like adding a city or adding sort of a, a, a sort of slice of, of life in, on an earth that we already kind of understand, opening a whole new world that seems daunting and massive? Uh, I mean, it really depends on, on how much on how much you expect the real world to fill in the blanks because a lot mm -hmm. of the work you do, whether you're a, a novelist or a cartoonist or a game designer is uh, you tell people how this world they're visiting is different than the world they're already in. Mm -hmm. So with something like Earth Prime, it is basically 21st century Earth plus supervillains and mm -hmm. superheroes and we go into explaining like well what does it mean that superpowers exist and at what point have superpowers been a major thing in history and right right yeah, yeah. got yeah. it well that makes sense go ahead steve well I, you know the the key difference when you're talking about a uh, role-playing game as opposed to uh fiction is that uh fictional authors get the advantage of introducing their settings gradually in the fashion that they want to. Yes. Um, so they can start at a particular starting point and <laughs> they can kind of zoom out as much as they want in terms of what you find out about the setting, you know, and what life is like there and who's there and where everything is. Whereas for a role-playing game, because we are not telling the stories, we're providing you the context in which you can tell stories. We have to provide a lot more upfront information uh, and at the very least, talk about the boundaries of we're going to tell you everything we can about this city, at least. And we expect that your stories are going to be set in this city. Or if we're talking about this world, then we at the very least have to provide the basic context for this whole world. 
Right. It's like the difference between a TV show where you only see what's within the frame and a theme park where you're walking Mm. through it and can look through, look at any angle. Yeah, that's a good analogy. Uh, That is, yeah, great analogy. Um, I do believe, and Alan, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Alan might be a brand new friend joining us. And uh, Alan has a great question, and it's one that you two get quite a bit um and i know about the time travelers codex (laughs) 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 dt sketch machino says uh now that the time travelers codex is on a boat uh and then swings into the vigilante's handbook question (laughs) no wait go back to alan's question (laughs) going back back. we'll get back to you dt but uh it just cracked me up um (laughs) Our fans are like they they uh, know, they know what's on the docket and they're just waiting. Uh, you know, they're very, hungry for more, and I appreciate they, that. They yes. are indeed. Um, Alan's uh, wondering what are some of uh, your uh, personal comic book inspirations. Oh, I always love this question because it changes every yeah. time. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I as you could guess from the technodrome behind me, I am a giant Ninja Turtles fan. <gasps> Uh, so I have been following I have been following the Ninja Turtles since my mother accidentally got me a copy of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number two when I was about five years old thinking that it was a funny animal book that would help teach me how to read (laughs) (laughs) the funny part is that early Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was so violent was so violent that's how I learned to swear (laughs) <laughs> no i mean i i my my exposure was uh you know through the popular you know mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah but, no the uh, original comic black and white comic was super gritty oh, it was like, great it was i mean i did not understand it as a like four or five year old but <gasps> no. right yeah sometimes it takes context to really bring that stuff home i mean when i was a four or five six i was reading stephen king novels i mean mm-hmm. that explains mm-hmm. a bit about what's going on in this noggin yeah but uh, um, how about you steve you have a um uh um i'm a big like uh, superhero team books are my jam i love team dynamics and i love like i mean i just the solo books are fine but i just love the dynamics of groups of superheroes mm-hmm. um and so I, you know anything like from the uh, the Justice League and the Avengers to the X-Men or the Legion of Superheroes is is just like catnip for me. I just love those books because I just want to learn everything about all the characters in the cast and all their relationships. And I just love the dynamics of all of those characters and how they interrelate uh, and all of that. I believe it's company policy that you can't work on mutants and masterminds unless you love Legion of Superheroes. Mm-hmm. Pretty much, yeah. True. True. I, I do want to tell you uh, mine um, only just because every time I think of him, I just sort of, um, I just get a little dreamy, wistful look in my eye. Um, Nightcrawler is the best. <laughs> mm-hmm. Love, love, love Nightcrawler. Um, let's see here. Nightcr- and, uh, and, and, you know, fun trivia fact, Nightcrawler was almost a Legion of Superheroes character. Yep. Really? Um, he got rejected Cochram, for Legion of Superheroes. Yes. Artist yeah. Dave Cockrum. Yes, designed Nightcrawler for Legion of Superheroes when he was he was drawing that book, and DC rejected the character concept, and so he just kept it in his portfolio. And when he started working with Len Wein to design the new X Men, he was like, "Hey, how about this guy?" Iconic character, wonderful construction, just sort of the backstory and all of that stuff, and in relatable ways. Um, but and- wow, that, I did not realize that, and good, I'm glad. And um, he went on to make fun of the Legion of Superheroes with the Shi'ar Imperial Guard. Yep. <laughs> that, uh, that is a very meta. I love it. Um, let's see. I'm, I'm rolling. There's a lot of good stuff in here. Um, let's see. Uh, which comic city would you prefer to live in? Gotham, Met, uh, Metropolis, or I almost said Metropolis and um, Marvel, um, New York? Hmm. I mean, it depends, like, which version of those, yes, because, right. like, the, the version of Gotham we see in the movies is different than what we see in the comics, which is different than we saw in the animated series. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I'm going to yeah. have to go personally with animated series Metropolis. Right. Love those Art Deco elevated yeah. Me too. I'm there. I'm with you. I'm yeah, with you. Right sure. there. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, we are in agreement. Solidarity. Let's Plus, see. You yeah. are 100% less likely to be shot by the Joker in Metropolis. Mm -hmm. Yes. And much safer if you fall off a building. Yep. True. Yes. All of these things are true. Uh, DT uh, says original uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was awesome. Uh, let's see. Um, Sean says, uh, let's see, take a look at Astro City. It is taking Oh, Astro City is terrific. Oh, yeah, great. yeah, yeah. Oh, G Boy yeah. or G Dog. Oh, G Dog. Yeah, yeah. it's super comics, but we kind of suck for a game setting as the detail came out. So, you know, the slowest, the, however, mm -hmm. I can steal or borrow. Well, Astro City is a great example of that in the terms of, mm -hmm. you know, obviously Kurt Busiek has a great notion in his head mm -hmm. about a lot of the details of the setting but he gets to reveal them at the pace he wants mm -hmm. as far as that goes, you know, and doesn't have to lay it all out for everybody in advance. Oh, Tarnished Angel was amazing though. Yeah, right. I love it. Sean Vieira says, long live the Legion. Um, let's see, Alan says, note yourself, read more Legion of Superheroes. It's a must. Um, it is, it's pretty terrific. Yeah, it is the law. Um, Oh, yeah. Raina says, I've never read Astro City. I hear so many wonderful things about it. Well worth checking out. Oh, Colossus was also supposed to be in Legion? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is something. The sun seems to shine in Metropolis, too. And yeah, then. Could you be, uh, imagine being the DC editor who passed up on Nightcrawler and right, Colossus? And Colossus, right? What is wrong with who these knew? people? <laughs> Wow. Um, Alan asks, is it appropriate to ask for a brief summary uh, of the beginning of the stream for us lay people? Well, we're just kind of doing this, yes. honestly. <laughs> uh, in theory, we're talking about world design and would mutants and masterminds be served by picking mm -hmm. a new world and apart from Earth Prime and, and helping it grow as a superhero setting. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I, and I mean, the, the very brief consensus we have is if we did something like that, we'd want to sort of space out the, the genres across different cities or regions. So we definitely, you know, not pack like our mutants and our cosmic heroes and our gritty noir superheroes into a single city. Yeah, mm -hmm. city density in that case might be a little dangerous. Um, yeah. uh, I'm actually changing my vote. My mm -hmm. favorite hero mm -hmm. all time, Apuk. <laughs> I Apuk, I see you there. Um, Apuk is Alpha more says, of a brooding Ooh. vigilante. Mm. True, true, but still a hero in my eyes. Uh, hide the beer, Apuk has arrived, says Raina. Thank you for the warning. I'm going to hear away from the microphone. Okay. Um, <laughs> oh, Jonesy says a vertical, uh, a vertigo type setting would also be nice. What's that? Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, well, I think we're referring to the Vertigo imprint of DC's comics, which is uh, a lot more sort of adult, uh, much more often occultish uh, mm -hmm. sort of stuff like Sandman and Hellraiser. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, right. I'll be honest, when I thought like a, a Vertigo setting, I'm just like, why? <laughs> just walking around, <laughs> just, you know, falling all over the place and constantly, you know, trying to uh, grip the world so you don't fall off. Mm -hmm. uh, One of those oh, interactive games, kind of like uh, Dread, except instead of yep. poking a Jenga tower, you spin around in your chair and try not to fall off. <laughs> People just shove you around. How many spins fight. depends on the you know action you're taking, mm -hmm. how difficult it is. <laughs> That's great, yeah. See, Sorry, game design be. happening right in front of your eyes, folks. You see, this is how the magic happens. <laughs> Um, but you know, the, talking about a vertigo setting raises an interesting point in terms mm -hmm. when we're talking about settings for mutants and masterminds, is you know whether or not the setting <laughs> even needs to be a superhero setting. Yeah. Oh. You know, because Mutants and Masterminds as a game engine can do a lot mm -hmm. uh, in terms of simulating a lot of different types of characters. So, uh, you know, would a, a new setting that uses the rule system even be a costumed superheroes save the world and fight crime kind of a setting? Maybe not. Yeah. I mean, the the same system of resolution and wearing people down slowly could just as easily be applied to uh, something like uh, wearing down somebody's will defense slowly in a horror setting or wearing mm -hmm. down their fortitude gradually in a like survival type scenario. Or even wearing down just how mean they are in order to make friends with them Aww. in, you know, uh, like a My setting. Little Pony. You know. I love it. Friendship is magic, as I've heard. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Yeah, that's uh, a good idea. <laughs> uh, 
having instead a friend. of a toughness, you've got a grumpiness. And, and I was... yeah, I mean, having having a friend does sound like a good idea. Yeah. I like it. you should try it. I, I've had mm-hmm. one, I think, once or twice. I um, I have one amazing friend who I would never part with. Mm-hmm. I heard it barking earlier. Wait, no, is that the? <laughs> no, that's my wife, Troy. I was going to oh. say, I think she's referring to the one she's married to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm fun. Oh, delight I am. Let's see. Uh, Raina says, "What? Uh, some advice for incorporating a foreign country as a setting." Uh, I mean, it really depends. Like, is this the country you're from, or do you want to to? Mm-hmm. Are you like an American who wants to set something in England, or? I mean, how many steps of separation is it from the culture you grew up with? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think if you're looking to say, if you, let's say you wanted to do something in uh, Paris, um, just have me zoom in and I'll be like, a bonjour, a baguette, <laughs> uh, and cheese. And I'll just do that over and over. It'll be like you're there. It's, uh, you know. <laughs> well, that's one of the I mean, challenges we faced with um, Atlas of Earth Prime yeah. was we wanted to portray all of these different parts of the world, but we also wanted to avoid the, this is the stereotypical American view of what this place is yeah. like. And it's an easy trap to fall into because if you haven't traveled a lot or read a lot of material from outside your own country, mm-hmm. you don't, you're kind of blind to your own You tend to get some of biases, your cultural yeah. information from things like Disney or the over sort of performance of things on American television. And it's it's a definitely a bit more nuanced, but not quite as entertaining as my French. Um, yeah. God help me. I got a lot of my world information at like 17 from Rift's source books. Mm-hmm. Oh, which <sighs> yeah. uh, it's a long time unlearning that. <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Um, Dimensional energy brings all of Earth's stereotypes to life. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, troubling. It's so Earth's weird Earth. how white people everywhere built these technological utopias and brown people everywhere reverted to how they were before white people were and mm-hmm. developed magic. And magic, right. And magic. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, let's see. There's a couple questions here. Um, you could go manga. That's something. We did mm-hmm. do a manga book. We did. We did, and it did come with a setting. Uh, did as a it come with a setting? Yeah, small one um, okay. that was mostly focused on, um, you know, as you might expect from giant from manga, giant companion robot things fighting each other. Oh, Not small, serious. adorable pets fighting each other. Mm-hmm. I thought it would oh. be a convention, <laughs> like a, a you know a. Uh, Sakura Khan or something, and that's where it happened. But no, that's not the case. Let's see here. Uh, Jonesy says, I cast Care Bear Stare. Right? Uh, yeah, I would love to develop a setting that's like a near future superhero <laughs> dystopia, sort of like Batman Beyond or like mm-hmm. cyberpunk with powers. Yep. Batman Beyond is so good. Oh, yeah, Raina yeah. does ask if we should have everyone wearing striped shirts and berets if they want to experience the true France sort yeah, of no, no Doritos at the table, only baguettes and brie. <laughs> hey, yo, yum, I'm kind of hungry. Uh, okay, I'm we can get stream outside of the home, and so usually I eat 40 or 50 cookies before this starts, and I have been mm-hmm. cookie-less. Oh. <laughs> well, Oreo just made a very nice queer friendly commercials so my wife went out and bought like three packages <laughs> why don't you I, come over troy and I stand six feet away and we'll throw oreos you to you right into my mouth right? um, <laughs> uh, did you, have you tried any of the odd um uh, flavors if they're like pumpkin spice and cheesecake and carrot cake and um yeah. me too that's normally those, what i eat 23. those carrot cake oreos are way better than they have any right to be wow it is offensive how good they are that's why i bought like four or five because i eat two at a setting let's see uh-huh. um what about breaking down campaign conventions like a book on mm-hmm. mute or a book on robots and a campaign in campaign structures yeah i think that's a great idea we haven't really we did a big book of powers and a big book of gear but we haven't really mm-hmm. done individual books on what it means to like what is a campaign built around just giant mm-hmm. robots look like, or what does a campaign just mm. built around uh, magical heroes look like? That's an interesting notion, actually. Yeah, what heroes do you fight, or what villains do you fight? What powers are generally available? Mm-hmm. Like, in what cases do you step outside without kind of breaking the immersion? 
right what are the tropes that are particularly common for mm -hmm. that you know kind I of like it I love that. Um, uh, Alan asks, and, and by the way, I'm just letting chat know, uh, Alan has now taken, you know, the lead in the uh, uh, greatest participants um, of the day. So <laughs> let's get about, on that. Sorry about all the coughing. I was just working with alkaline chemicals before we started and <laughs> I was not adequately ventilated. Oh no, so you know, <laughs> had a little uh, alkalization, as they say in the scientific world. Um, Alan Basically said- Basically just poisoning myself, it's fine. Yeah, you know, yeah, why not? Um, I knew I should uh, have taken a rank of immunity. Right. <laughs> yeah. Alan says, what types of games inspire y'all's yeah. design? Oh. Um, uh, RPGs, video, um, card, board games. Hmm. Hmm. I will give away a big secret. I am not a video gamer. <laughs> I I keep trying to be, and there's a couple of games I love, but I mean, they're mostly things like Stardew Valley and Animal Crossing. Mm. You know, and I, yeah. I love the heck out of the new Spider-Man game, but mostly because I love swinging around the buildings. <laughs> Same yeah. for me. Like having been in the industry for 20 some year, 20, less than 20 years, um, it, it's too, like, I feel like it's work when I really have to get crunchy about it. Stardew Valley, I love, mm -hmm. and, you know, Animal Crossing, of course, but, uh, but yeah, that's interesting. So what about other games? What are some of the other, oh. you know, things that kind of keep your, keep your motor running? I mean, like in terms of things that inspired my, my, process to become a game designer uh i played a bunch of champions i played a bunch mm -hmm. of heroes unlimited i played a bunch of big eyes small mouth and like that combination in particular taught me a lot about gming when everything is exploding and the rules don't matter right <laughs> right yes wow. yeah i mean right. you know pretty much every superhero game ever you know, to one degree or another has informed, you know, uh, the sort of games I'd like to design. Um, I do like, um, I like a certain amount of completeness in a game, mm -hmm. um, probably, you know, because I'm a, a trifle obsessive. Um, yeah, we, we both hail from a kind of an earlier philosophy of game design where, I mean, game manuals are good guides for the rules, but also something that's fun to read kind mm -hmm. of like a travel log almost. Yep, yep, that's true. The world or the industry is kind of starting to shift away from, which is fine, things, mm -hmm. yeah, change over time. Yeah. Or the, and there can still be room for those different approaches, right? I mean, that's yeah, kind oh, of- yeah, absolutely. I mean, we have an old school revolution built around the idea of games as purely adversarial and like as board games almost. So there's mm -hmm. plenty of room for the philosophy that existed 20 years ago. God. Yep. Absolutely. I've been in this industry way too long. Way too long. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I got to find a second. I just <sighs> need a moment. <laughs> just got to age real quick. Okay. <laughs> place. I love it. Um, uh, so, a lot of suggestions, of kind of a flurry of inspiration. People were talking about uh, Pook um, after impugning and uh, offending Canadians. <laughs> How can you even do that? That's amazing. That's a power. Look, How dare you? You're right. You have to try real hard. Um, Canadians are our friends. They are. I mean, yeah. Like, unless they're you. smashing up, you know, native property and then screw them yeah exactly uh and well said uh Apu said uh i've been thinking i keep thinking about uh, doing a voltron game oh mm. we've got a guide well i mean abook's probably well aware that mm -hmm. in the super team handbook we have a a campaign kind of built around the same idea of mm -hmm. you know rangers who are empowered to bring their giant robots together and fight evil I love it. Uh, Alan brings up that we were talking about uh, earlier in the chat. They were chatting about a Doctor Strange type magic book. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. That's kind of nice. And then this is the one that kind of snagged my mind just because there are so many very unique IPs out in the world with their own mechanisms and sort of uh, you know, every video game tries to create a fantastical space, a new, I mean, you're talking about mm -hmm. settings. Mm -hmm. uh, John said Overwatch mm -hmm. as oh, a yeah. Yeah. cyberpunk superhero kind of thing that's it is, yeah. kind of yeah yeah and then uh Apuk said avatar the last airbender oh that's more yes. of a fantasy superpowers yeah it is mm -hmm. setting but oh yeah. what a brilliant uh, example <gasps> yeah all right what would you just, be fire nation watched, uh, yeah. what would you nation. Be? 
Earth. Mm-hmm. Oh, Earth, good. Yeah, Earth bending's great. Nobody See, about you. Earth. Nobody appreciates Earth benders. No, Earth benders are awesome. What are you talking yeah. about? Yeah, I think that for me, I just uh, I I have a hard time picking. Um, I tend to lean a little villainy sometimes, just in my you know fun um, sort of uh, world of where villains mm-hmm. can really, you know harm you, um, uh, so to speak. But uh, Fire Nation, I keep thinking of. But Steve, how about you? Yeah. Um, I have to say, I'm a big Earth Nation fan myself. I mean, the whole, like, and uh, a lot of it from um, Legend of Korra, just because yeah. the whole Bayfong family is, is like my oh. adopted family. They're so <laughs> like, dysfunctional and I love queer them so and, much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Lin Bayfong is basically me if I had a real job. <laughs> I love this. So um, uh, Sean says, I borrowed the aliens from Mass Effect. They're cool. And there's oh, a yeah. mm. interesting uh, sure. question for Crystal. Crystal, do you find that uh, that the everything exploding and things don't matter mentality is part <laughs> of mutants and masterminds or or solved by mutants and masterminds? I mean, a little of column A and a little of column B. Uh, mm-hmm. Anytime you've got a point by system like mutants and masterminds, you you are going to end up with characters who can do all kinds of over-the-top incredible things, especially once you add in the, the hero point system or, or you know, other systems have variations on that that accomplish roughly the same thing. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, Mutants and Masterminds has this very straightforward resolution mechanic of, well, roll a d20, figure out what applies to it, and figure out how tough what you're trying to do is. So if my heroes are trying to use their uh, x-ray vision to search the area for a bomb, I can, you know, okay, well, that's going to be really easy to do with x-ray vision. So it's a DC 10, add your senses, rank to it, go. (gasps) I love it. Um, Mm -hmm. Matthew Tyler says, uh, will we see three E write-ups for pseudo captain thunder before he was depowered and and possibly in the upcoming vigilantes handbook question mark the uh members of force ops oh gosh well i mean for keep in mind the members of force ops are like in their know, 40s and 50s right, i was gonna say are like my age now yeah so you mean vibrant and wonderful and super strong and ready to go yeah yeah totally how are your hips today, Steve? Right, complaining about their back aches and their, you know. Right. I'm literally right. sitting sideways because my lower back is killing me to say. Right, I'm in this photo and I don't like it. Right. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, I think if, if there was a, a proper venue for those those write-ups, uh, it would be something to, to, to look at. Yeah, I mean, we don't have any plans on it right now, but... I mean, I, I don't know what's coming in the next year. Things are mm-hmm. things are kind of up in the air and weird right now. We're mm-hmm. kind of, we've had to stretch out the 2020 schedule to be like a 2020-2021 schedule. <laughs> yeah. Although one thing, you know, it is worth thinking about, you know, is the notion of doing smaller bits of Mutants and Masterminds Very content. True you know, like, like a Patreon or like, you know, something oh, of yeah. that sort, you oh, know, where we could good. say, hey, you know, you want some things like the third edition stats for Captain Thunder? We'll do that next week, you know, yeah. sort of thing. I, you know, that's interesting. That is interesting. And it, it allows for the space to, you know, continue to eat and mm-hmm. pay the bills while also, you know, kind of meeting a small niche kind of uh, fun. Right, um, fun right. Yeah, because the challenge with a lot of those things is finding, you know, in traditional publishing is finding where to put them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I and mean, there's tons we'd love to do. It's just a lot of them are small enough that where do you put it? Right. Like, I'd love to, well, we can't do anything from metaphor, but I love the yeah. click and I'd rub, love to use the click in something or just they're in the deluxe heroes handbook, but not the normal heroes handbook or the basic heroes handbook. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and, and yeah. the reality is, as busy as the two of you can be, we're still playing kind of a zero sum game. And some be, something's got to give, and you know, prefer. <laughs> well, well, yeah, there's you. that too. Yeah, yeah. There are I wish so I had many hours all, in the day. Yeah, I wish I had all the hours in the day to do more Eminem game design. If if that were an option, I would just write everything myself all of the time because. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, but then mm-hmm. I'd have to fight Steve because Steve would also write all the things all the things time. Where right. would you find the time for that? 
Yeah. So um, uh, a couple of great questions here uh, for Sean. I want to say, um, Sean, you get the Keeping Troy Accountable Award. Um, and believe me, you will win that frequently. I, you know, the need is, is uh, manifold. But uh, uh, as far as the Forum Restoration Project, we're in the process of identifying some resources and things that kind of come a little bit before that. But uh, I have begun to open it up and to peel out some of that data. And then the world kind of went a little weird. So, uh, but the good news is, I feel uh, like this sudden inspiration. I feel oh, yeah. Lighter. I, I feel like <laughs> I wonder if there's something going around because I felt that the last couple of days too. I kind of energetic. I slept really well. I, that's the thing. My wife has been super cuddly. Yeah, I, I woke up and I was like, "Wait a minute, was that a full? Was that a full seven hours of?" <laughs> uh, it was just really. I don't. So I don't know what it is, but uh, but I've caught it. And uh, Sean, thank you for that. And then um, and pulled up your um, uh, emails, you'll be sending out uh, and have made a request for the codes that you will use to get yourself your prize of the, um, do, 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 what is it called? I forgot with all this funny chit chat. Um, uh, the, what was the spooky book? Um, it was the- book, Bite Club? Yes. The Supernatural thing. Handbook. The super, yeah, the Bite Club and yeah, yeah, yeah. So that is on the way. Um, and we'll be to you, uh, boy, it might even be there now. Uh, don't go away yet. We're still doing the show. Um, let's see. Do, do, do. So, yeah, tell the Reddit group. And I'll stop by today with uh, with some stuff and actually show y'all where uh, the data is. So you can poke at it yourself. Um, and let's see. You know, Sean Vieira is really full of a lot of these interesting facts, but says the Legend of Korra was designed to be a more superheroish series than mm -hmm. less in the last yeah. avatar it's 1920s yeah, it's pretty clearly yeah let's see 2020 weird that sums things up yeah absolutely yeah, yeah. um oh yeah you know, alan asks what is the relationship between green ronin and icons since icons was made by an m&m designer there kind of isn't thing. much um green ronin very thoughtfully uh arranged to uh print the original uh print run of the assembled edition of icons Mm -hmm. and to distribute it through their distribution channels, um, which was, you know, much appreciated because, you know, uh, Greener Needs uh, ownership are friends of mine. Um, but um, other than that, um, there really isn't much of a relationship uh, to speak of. Uh, and uh, now that the um, original print run of Assembled Edition is sold through uh, even less uh, because uh, Greener Needs doesn't have to deal with any of that nonsense anymore. <laughs> Sorry, I'm looking into the eyes of that puppy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry, she's been begging for attention all afternoon. Always a delight. Always a delight. Um, uh, Steve uh, and Crystal, the reason why Alan brings that up is that um, uh, it is his hope to kind of do an icons version of Earth Prime characters to share with kids. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, uh, Alan says, uh, would you consider a super basic kids version of Mutants and Masterminds? Isn't the system flexible enough to kind of craft that or or is that a, a good resource that uh I mean, the resolution system is fairly straightforward but the mm -hmm. character building system is pretty complicated mm -hmm. I mean, it's yeah. a little bit of a barrier to entry yeah, yeah. that so, said yeah secure's handbook handles that problem very nicely and i think that older kids would have no problem picking up uh, how to play the game from that. Yeah, that is said, Icons is still just a great flexible system for like, if it's your first role-playing game or or if you just want a role-playing game that's a little easier to to navigate at the table, like mm -hmm. Icons, absolutely. A lot of love for Icons. And our recommendation in the past and, and remains uh, into the future is just have them fight to actually physically fight to, to resolve. <laughs> uh, Do not listen to Troy. No, Troy... Troy comes with a surgeon general's warning. I do, yes, yeah. And Absolutely. that he is neither a surgeon nor a general. Nor a general, not even, yeah, yeah. Um, Raina says, shout out for Bike Club. I'm hoping to finish playing it tomorrow. So awesome. Uh, nice. Fun. Many, many I, exclamations. Are, are you a child of darkness yet? That's the real question. Mm. <laughs> we'll wait for your answer on that, Raina. And uh, yeah, Sean Vieira says, love icons. Own every book in hardcover just like M&M. &M. Oh, and uh, I'm so glad to hear it. Thank you, Jonesy, for the links. 
um, as we sort of move towards our uh, the conclusion of this hard hitting episode of Mutants and Mastermind Monday, uh, what are some thoughts? What are, uh, you know, talk to me about uh, how you're feeling, what's happening, um, and what do we think we want to? You know, one of the things we did today, um, you know, Steve, uh, you know, I, I constantly for the both of you um, spend a, a much of my day. Uh, um, you know, sort of sharing uh, all of your uh, most fantastic sort of uh, attributes as humans, uh, both of you being so incredibly talented and fun and, and funny and, and uh, all of the things. Uh, but Steve, you came up with a list of really interesting ideas for live streams. And I, I kind of like to just sort of share. And then um, folks, if you're, uh, as you are kind of hearing these ideas and you've got an idea, send a note to let's play at greenronin.com. And I will ignore it for a week and then, uh, you know, uh, uh, let's see, our friend uh, Doug and we'll have to um, remind me and then we'll move on from mm -hmm. there. Uh, but yeah, you know, share some of the ideas that you have. Uh, well, let's see. About an idea, Haver, is that you have so many of them, you have to write them down and then they're out of your head. Right. <laughs> yeah. Was, we should just have Owen much... on. <laughs> yeah. right. Owen's ideas. And they're all rock solid. Good well, idea. yeah. I mean, Owen is like an ideas machine. I it's mean, I phenomenal. wish. Oh my God. Follow Owen's Facebook and or Twitter for right? reviews of the campaigns he runs. Oh, yeah. Oh it's my crazy. God. I, well, it's just I like it, 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 Owen will do like a, a five post, you know, like thread of, oh, I was just thinking about this campaign idea. Mm -hmm. And I'll yeah. be just like, that's ridiculous. Like inspiring. How, yeah. Right. Like how amazing is that? And then you read the comments too, and people are just engaged and they're activated. Mm -hmm. They kind of, he just has this effect, this area of effect that well, he's, uh, he's so yeah. good at like sharing his vision and making you see it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And just, a, um, you know, and, and I think, um, you know, really folks who are uh, checking out what we're doing here you're missing out if you don't join us for Thursday, which is 2 p.m. on mm -hmm. Thursday, believe it mm -hmm. or not, where it's just Owen. We'll have some guests, and well, it's me as, as well, but think of me as sort of like, you know, just a disembodied voice. Mm -hmm. um, but um, Owen, you know, on Thursdays at 2 p.m. Pacific, uh, we'll be streaming and having conversations with you, and um, so join us, you know, right here and uh, in other places as well, eventually. But yeah, so your uh, idea. Sorry. All right. So just a few things that we could potentially talk about. Um, we can talk some more now about, you know, virtual tabletop play, um, because that's been a big, obviously, you know, new frontier for a lot of people uh, during the pandemic uh, is exploring playing uh, RPGs online rather than in person. Um, and how that, you know, particularly interacts with mutants and masterminds. Um, about you know uh, teaching mutants and masterminds uh, to uh, folks whose only experience is thus far is playing Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, fifth edition D and D has brought a lot of new gamers uh, into the hobby, yeah. um, and a lot of them are eager to explore what else lies beyond uh, the bounds of D and D. Uh, mutants and masterminds is a just a kind of a short jump from there in many ways. So uh, it's, you know, talking about how, how to make that jump. Um, we'd love to talk some more about the, um, the Mutants and Masks super powered by M&M publishers, our various third party publishers uh, yeah. who provide support for the game, uh, who are doing some of their own projects, uh, spotlight uh, some of the interesting things uh, that are going on there. Um, and um, there's a little bit of, you know, some of the things that we talked about today in terms of, you know, the, the notions of, uh, you know, mutants and masterminds as a, as a system that has potential beyond superheroes um, and settings uh, beyond Earth Prime, uh, or even just the whole notion, we have the whole notion of the omniverse, you know, within the context of Earth Prime of, you know, looking at parallel universes and other settings that could be part of a bigger m m sort of meta setting uh, no, an omniverse goes. is just a universe that eats everything and not just well that contains yeah, it's not everything. a megaverse or a carnivorous yeah a right. carnivorous oh, oh, so oh, a carnivorous that would be a super <laughs> awesome villain of, oh you know, like a like an evil galaxy or an evil universe an, that eats galaxies an evil universe that eats universes 
this is solid gold. This is why they have me here, folks. This I'd be shocked if DC right? hasn't done that already. True. Yeah. They, yeah. They probably have, have but are good. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I just had to, you know, get that in there. I was so far behind. Yeah. So that sort of stuff. Yeah, one of the things that we're going to do as well. Sorry, we get distracted uh, by evil universes in the universe. Yeah, the carnivores um, is, you know, that's a concern. Uh, and, uh, carnivores, I, copyright Crystal Frazier 2020. Right, 2020. I love it. I love it. Um, and, uh, you, you know, the other thing that we're going to do, uh, I this is a call to action for all of our Mutants and Masterminds fans. Uh, is this about voting in Georgia? Because absolutely. That is, that is definitely a call to action. And if but. you can't vote, here's the deal. You can uh, you can text bank, you can phone bank, you can, what I like to call a uh, face bank, which is talk to people who are, you know, posting and, you know, sharing um, uh, that live out, maybe, maybe not uh, sort of just randomly contact people on Facebook, but there are systems and processes <laughs> and you can really help. You can really move the needle there. And money is uh, a great way to help as well because the, you know, runoffs are not cheap. Um, you know. <sighs> Yeah, but the, the world <laughs> and certainly the nation is watching as we sort of cross all of our appendages. Um, but the other thing is, give us your live streamers. Uh, we want, uh, so yes, I've yes, please. Sort of permeating, you know, as I do, uh, as I am just a voice. Uh, Alex, we know you're watching. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, we want to invite people to, um, uh, Sorry, Kevin uh, says, uh, as a GA resident and definitely voting in the runoff, good. Um, so glad to hear it and welcome to the stream. Glad you're here. Uh, uh, I've been meeting with some folks and talking and we've got some pretty exciting streaming plans kind of in the, you know, in the works. One may be sort of a Christmas extravaganza capade of some kind. Um, we'll say holiday uh, is probably mm -hmm. more appropriate. But, um, but yeah, so if you know a streamer and you let us know, send a link over, tell us all about it and, you know, tell the streamer about us and they're doing mutants and masterminds things. You know, the, sometimes we run into sort of like, because mutants and masterminds is so adaptable, um, you know, there are sometimes IP things that you can't necessarily dive mm. directly in and say, right. great, yeah. this, but we can, we still want to know them. Um, we still want to get to know them and sort of, become their BFFs and, you know, maybe invite them onto the stream for a talk. Yeah, I'm not saying I have M&M statistics for all the major cast of Disney's Gargoyles, but <laughs> See, also that's... got- I'm also, also not, got, not saying that. <laughs> also got stats for a lot of the rest of the Disney afternoon. Just can't share them. <laughs> wow. Okay, well, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Um, not not <laughs> saying that. So if you know a streamer who's hip to, what are some other things of the Disney afternoon? I'm thinking like- uh, uh, Dale Spin, Chip and Dale's Rescue Rangers, DuckTales. Duck Tales. Tales. That's so Raven. <laughs> Isn't that Sorry. a Disney joint? Because um, I, I play in a That's So Raven's you know, uh, campaign. Uh, kind of a streamer, but definitely a third party person. Okay. Yeah, much oh, more yeah. of a Hannah Montana girl myself. I love it. Oh, the possibilities. Hey, um, I want to say thank you all for hanging out. Thank you for your great questions. Um, today is a particularly joyous day. And again, um, no better way than to hang out with you all and uh, meet our new friends. Uh, Kevin says Darkwing Duck and Eminem agreed. Mm -hmm. And uh, Crystal, Steve, as usual, a incredible um, uh, joy and pleasure to hang out with you every single Monday. And we'll be back next Monday uh, with more of this um, uh, joyous noise. Um, anything you'd like to say before we go? Uh, I mean, thank you everyone who voted. Uh, continue mm. to wear your mask because we are not out of this pandemic yet, just because we have a new president and try to take care of each other. Yeah. 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 Try to give yourselves a break. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and have some fun. Have some yeah. fun. All right, everybody. Um, thank you all. We will see you next week. Miss you. Kiss you. Take care, Bye. everybody. Bye-bye.